Mike, Mike person. Mike person. All right, I'm going to sacrifice my own mic. Colin, you should swallow this. Okay. All right. There we go. Mike, I'm here to talk to you about a problem. A problem of a lack of time, tra time travel resistant crypto. Because this is what people are going to see in the future. They're going to see everyone looking at post quantum crypto, but ignoring time travel. And post quantum crypto. There is some theory that maybe there's a good, uh, powerful computer that's going to cause quantum computing to be possible. Who knows? And when it exists, it's very bad. So we should all concentrate on this. To me, this sounds like something else. Sounds like time travel. And you might ask, OK, Colin, but where are the time travelers? If time travel is possible, surely they would be among us. And maybe we don't know of them yet. Maybe. Honestly, would you visit 2019? If you could time travel, would you go now? Probably not. And maybe we can only transfer little bits of information. There's some immediate applications of time travel resistant crypto. If you haven't kept up with the academic publications, you might have missed Time AI, which entangles a key stream from both the past and the future. And it was presented at Black Hat USA, amongst other various steam venues. So this is a very real, real problem we need to solve. The other thing is that time travel might require us to first create a closed time-like curve. So this means time travel will become possible once this happens. So suddenly, we will have to deal with time travel. Um, OK, so what are some attacks we, we look to solve? So the first one you could do is we could do a brute force attack. And we simply go 14 billion years in the future. Once we start our computer, we recover the AES key, and we go back to the, the present. So that's pretty trivial. Um, we could transfer the key material. If we knew where the HSM is located at a past point in time, could we read the bits out of that HSM? And this is especially uh, critical, because maybe we can only transfer particles instead of whole humans. Um, the other thing we have is the evil cryptographer attack. So what if someone from the future went back in time to implement poor crypto? And who would that look like? They would contribute work that's suspiciously open, suspiciously free, and it would be used in the industry, and the industry would very clearly have a vague understanding. So I won't name names, but I think among us, we might have an idea who could be time travelers and would fit this criteria. Um, there's many solutions for it. So I would propose, for example, we could define a standard for where some bits must go that should be encrypted in the future. And the future self has solved this problem. They encrypt the bits and then sends it back to us. Um, of course, we would have to figure out how we incentivize the future cryptographers to do this. So that's a bit of an open problem. But this would be a great Chez 2021 topic. Um, so I know Benedict will be looking to set the future of, of Chez, and so this type of material will be very interesting, I'm sure. Um, TTRC is inherently future-proof. Post-quantum crypto is not inherently future-proof, so that, you know, that sounds cool, but it's not. Um, we might need new architectures, like non-causal cryptography. Um, there, there's quite a bit of, of possibilities here. So I implore you to consider time travel resistant crypto, and I look forward to your submissions in future Chez sessions. Okay. Thanks, Colin. And the next one is uh, physically unclosable functions, stochastic methods wanted. And the, I guess, talk is by uh, Sylvain Gouli, uh, Yohi Hori, and Yung Sam Kang. Sorry for butchering your names. And Sylvain will give the talk. Thank you. There's the time to put up the slides, I guess. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's not all right, going uh, so in the past or in the future, let me see, whoops, whoops, I need to go in the future. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, maybe missing, you know, what do you think? Mm, so may maybe let's, uh, you know, let's, uh, <laughs> I'm go back in the past. Apparently, we ate his slides, <laughs> and we'll try again. 
Silvan, we'll, we'll, we'll get another chance at the end of the RAM session. Sorry about that. Okay, Colin, you're back on about why go to use the X2020. Enjoy your beer. Okay, I'm, I'm one handy this. So you might want to go to use Next 2020, and maybe that's because you want a city with Irish heritage uh, where people like drinking. You, you want oh. this. I don't need it. There's one <laughs> slide. Um, and good international flights. However, I would say instead of that, consider going to selected areas of cryptography, which pending approval is in Halifax, which also has lots of Irish heritage, people like drinking, and no direct flights to Germany. Um, <laughs> on the plus side, it's slightly cheaper, and there's probably going to be dogs. So when you're considering where to go uh, in August, I implore you to consider the selected areas in cryptography conference, most likely in Halifax. All right, cool. Thanks, Colin. Uh, okay, and the next one is Sacred Open Source Side Channel Library by Ishield, and Benjamin Timon would give the talk. Yeah, I think you actually have a mic now. Be okay. Try it. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Yes, so you use that. It works better if you put it here. Sorry, the clicker, yes. So, good evening. Um, so, no. Keep going, keep going. Uh, I need to skip. Or? No, other way, other way. <laughs> You're going to the past, we want the future. <laughs> keep going. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, you're still going to the past. <laughs> yes, one more click. Good, start. <laughs> okay, but it's missing one. Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. So it's a, it's a presentation to talk about uh, Scared, which is a, a new open source library for side channel. So. Uh, at Ishal, we have been working on uh, side channel tools in Python and Jupyter. And uh, uh, some people in the community, they, they express the interest to having access to the code of these tools. So we also think the open source is a good practice uh, and a good initiative. So we decided uh, it's a good time to release our base side channel library in Python, make it available to everybody. So uh, this is scared. Um, uh, so for Scared, we, we, we put a special focus on three things, which are the performances, the quality, and the documentation. Uh, the documentation is uh, available online already. You can have a look to it. Um, so this is an extract of the documentation. Uh, inside the library, you will find basically uh, everything you expect from a, a side channel library. So we have some module to do trace management uh, with different formats based on abstract readers. Um, we have a preprocessing uh, module to perform preprocessing before the attack, for example, to do high order attacks. Uh, some analysis module to perform analysis with different distinguishers. So we have implemented the different uh, state of the art distinguisher like DPA, CPA, MIA, but also template, ANOVA, etc. All this analysis can be performed on different targets, so AES, DES, with different selection function to target different parts of the algorithm. Uh, we also have different leakage model, of course, different discriminant to uh, 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 process the score at the end of the attack. Uh, for, for this library, we really want the project to be open, so we will keep updating the tool uh, in the future. Uh, in the coming release, you will find uh, some, for example, some signal processing toolbox to perform uh, uh, resynchronization of traces. So uh, all the APIs are accessible through like uh, high-level high uh, APIs, which are user-friendly. But if you want to do some more complex uh, things, uh, if you want to uh, make uh, attack more, do more complex analysis, you also have access to the low-level API, which are uh, composable and extendable. Um, so in a few lines of code, this is a, an example of how you could use Scared. So if you are in a notebook. You can just import scared, and uh, you can already, uh, in a few lines of code, perform, uh, few line of code perform an attack. So, um, uh, for example, you define your uh, data set. You can load your data set, uh, define your selection function to define where you want to attack, uh, define your attack object, and then you can run the attack, and the, the, the scores are in the attack object, and you can exploit these scores. 
So concerning performances, we, we, ha we have decided to benchmark the library to know uh, where it stands in terms of performances. So uh, this topic is always um, a bit delicate, performances. Um, so basically what we did is we, 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 t we found mainly one reference online, which is this open source, um, open source uh, benchmark of different side channel uh, tools. Uh, what, we do what we did is we, we basically uh, took that as a basis and we extended the result of this benchmark with the latest uh, libraries for side channel. So um, this is the result we got. So the, the, the first result on the left, the three first results are coming from the original benchmark. Uh, and we have extended, as I said, with a new, uh, new, new, new uh, frameworks. Basically, we uh, run the same test, which was a CPA on 100,000 traces, uh, AES target, it was the same benchmark test. Uh, we did it on the equivalent configuration, uh, equivalent desktop. And so this is the result we got. Um, with this result, so scared is the last one. This is the time execution of the benchmark test. And uh, so this one gives us confidence that the, the, the library is quite performant to perform side channel. As I said, is one of the things we try to focus on is uh, uh, performances. So we put a special focus on code optimization. So just to finish on this part, uh, so as I said, it's uh, maybe a bit delicate to benchmark uh, and compare frameworks. If you have different results uh, uh, on, on similar benchmark, feel free to, 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 to come to us. We will be happy to share and discuss on, on, on this topic. Uh, so to, to conclude, um, to, to get started with SCARED, everything is already available online. So uh, to install it, you can install through the classic channels. You can pip install SCARED, conda install SCARED. The code is available on GitLab and GitHub, and the documentation is also available. So uh, feel free to have a look, to download SCARED, to play with it, and we really hope it will uh, bring positive things in the community. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next one up are uh, announcements for Crusade 2020, and Guido and Francisco should be here somewhere. Oh, here's Guido. Go ahead, the floor is yours, and please use the clicker responsibly. The right way. Thank you. Ciao, belli. So, 11 edition of Crusade, probably the best workshop for site channel. So, it will be in uh, Lugano which is near uh, Italy, in Switzerland, and near Germany. Beautiful lake. Uh, topics, implementation attacks and exploitation, secure implementation, resilient architecture and scheme, secure design and evaluation and design tools. I don't know what is Alfredo. Ah, come on. Eh? <laughs> come on. So paper submission December 1st, notification uh, January 2020, and the workshop will be beginning of April. So we wait you to welcome in Lugano. I'm sure that most of you want to sponsor, so please refer to General Chair if you want to sponsor, and uh, Francesco and myself will be the program chair. Thank you. Cool, and now we're gonna retry the failed attempt from last time. So, uh, Sylvian, are you around for your talk that we messed up? Come on, come up. Uh, so, let's try that again while Peter manually configures the slide. Only the failing method. Yes. Uh, yes. Wonderful Apple GUI right here, live. Uh, where you have to hit, oh. Literally drag and drop. <laughs> All right, so let's try that. Sylvian, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I wanted to say a few words about the puffs. Uh, there are many talks about puffs. Uh, most of them are actually, you know, a kind of negative, huh, like attacks on puff. But actually, there's a lot of. Um, business and good things to do uh, to secure uh, our uh, life. Huh? And uh, one way to, to make some progress is actually to uh, do some standardization, okay? Um, this uh, work was initiated, I guess, uh, five years ago at ISO. 
and uh, we almost now have something published regarding the requirements. This means what you expect uh, from uh, a puff, so what is a good puff? Huh? Uh, uh, there are some uh, properties to be met, okay? So, um, basic definitions uh, about things you know, huh? uh, like uh, how steady is my puff, how random is it, etc. cetera. Uh, so, okay, let me move to the next one. Um, the second part is still at its uh, infancy. So you see it is WD, WD means uh, working draft. So we still welcome contributions and uh, the kind of contribution we welcome is here, actually, uh, some uh, stochastic models uh, to model the uh, steadiness and uh, the entropy. Um, so please uh, do some um, research to uh, also theoretically uh, model the puff, and uh, those examples will be used as uh, kind of motivation uh, in the next standardization. Uh, okay, thank you. Don't hesitate to contact actually the, the editors. Uh, so, Yoe Hori from Japan, Yu Sung Kang, and uh, myself. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and for the final talk of the session, we have uh, Dominique Fauter, who is a last minute addition to the program, so we're not quite sure what he's gonna talk about, but at least we hope he is. Okay, thank you everybody for, uh, and thank you for the uh, chairs for giving me time to make some shameless plugs. Um, so first, uh, if you were at the talks earlier today, we talked about, thank you, uh, <laughs> a covert gate. And uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is that um, UF and uh, FIX uh, is um, running a, a deobfuscation competition, actually two obfuscation competitions. Um, one of which is starting next month, so please, you know, send your, uh, send your um, uh, request to me if you want more information. We'd be happy to have more folks in the competition. And uh, the reason we divided actually into two competitions is because our own competition had competition. Uh, so uh, the first part of the competition is actually focused on a, a scan chain protection mechanism for obfuscation. Um, and the second part will actually be focused on the covert gates that I uh, presented earlier today. Um, and again, if you have more, uh, if you want more information, please let me know. And uh, the second, <laughs> the second, uh, the second uh, thing I wanted to talk about uh, is actually I wear multiple hats, uh, and I'm wearing the host uh, general chair hat this year as well. Um, so before I get accused of, you know, poaching lots of audience members and exhibitors and folks from chess and causing Chexit uh, 2019. Uh, I just want to, you know, let you know that chess is, is um, basically uh, almost 20 years old, right? So you're almost of legal drinking age in the United States, um, but Host is, is still not even old enough to get into a PG-13 movie. It's, it's just 12 years old. So please, we need, we need more folks to uh, join chess as well as Host. And um, uh, so uh, at Host, we have, um, uh, we've been growing. We have about uh, 300 attendees now. Um, plus, and we're trying to uh, grow, grow more from there. No, 14, minus one, 12. <laughs> so it also depends on where you start counting, from the workshop or the conference. So we may actually even be younger than 12. Uh, we may actually be 10 years old. Uh, so yeah, please, please, uh, you know, join us at, at host. We'd be happy to have you know, we're welcoming all kind of work there, and uh, we're even starting uh, a, a, hopefully a large-scale exhibition this year. Um, it'll be our first year in San Jose, and uh, you know, we'd like to have you guys there. So that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. So this uh, sort of concludes the run session. We hope that you had some fun. And there's actually two people we would like to really thank for uh, well this setup. So first, Lorenz Pani, who was already mentioned a few times there, 
um, he wrote that script and uh, this web server that displays stuff there on top. And um, Hillary Taylor, who gave us her laptop so that we can actually run that web server on some actual hardware. Um, so please, big thank you to the two of them. And then, and then also we had slight concerns if it would be a good idea to let 400 security researchers post completely uncensored comments on slides live. And we're very, very glad that it worked out that nicely. And so also a big applause to you. I think it speaks for the community. Thank you. And this um, session is now closed.